Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Lift your voices like the voice of triumph. Touch the word there. Touch the word there. Touch the word there. Touch the word there. He's wonderful. Yes. He's counselor. He's the mighty yes. God. Yes. The yes. Prince of Peace. Yes. The everlasting Father. Yes. You are a great Jehovah. Yes. In the name yes. of Jesus, we welcome you just one more time to the Friendship Baptist Church in here in Wilmington, Delaware. So do me a minute before we start. Grab your friend. Grab your family yes. member. Yes. Grab your neighbor. Let them know friendship is here Sunday morning. Yes. We're going to have good church yes. this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. So join us as we go and lift up our name, our yeah. God, and our King. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, He reigns forever and evermore. Yeah, God. Oh, put your hands together, everybody. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. Great God. Great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
been blessing us and keeping us through danger seen and unseen. He is wonderful and he is marvelous. Words cannot describe how grateful and thankful we are to serve such a magnificent Savior. Bill Gibbs didn't make it. But I stand here this morning glad that I am one that did. Well, there is a word from the Lord this morning. You have your Bibles, go with me to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verse number 1. Mark chapter 2, verse number 1. For today, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation for more clarity for the moment. The Bible records, and when Jesus returned to Capernaum, several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon, the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on the mat. They could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on the mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of the religious, of the religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked him, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven. Or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sin. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, take up your mat, and go home. Verse 12, And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, walked out through the stunted onlookers. They were all amazed praise God, exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. Father God, we thank you and praise you. We honor you and we glorify you. Father God, like I've asked so many times, Father God, preach me. Preach me until the walls cave in. Preach me, O oh God, to the sinner becomes a saint. Preach me, O oh God, until someone knows who you really are. Father God, decrease me, O oh God, that you might be increased. Rest, rule, and abide with me is my prayer. Open the hearts of those who are listening. O oh God, strengthen their relationship with you in this moment in time. And God, we will give you all of the glory. Let the words of my mouth, the sweet meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus the Christ's name I do pray. Knowing that all things are now accomplished, I say, Amen. Amen. And while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. 
They could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered him, the man on the mat, right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. This morning, with the help of him who reigns, rules, and has regency, I want to preach from the subject, please don't drop me. Please don't drop me. Uh, brothers and sisters, in life, there are many situations, circumstances, trials, and tribulations. My brothers and sisters, there are moments in your life where it seems like no one really has your best interest at heart. No one seems to understand when you are tired, when you are fatigued, when you don't want to do it, when your body is telling you one thing, but the doctors are saying something else. It is amazing to me that in life, we go through changes trying to figure out the best way or the right way to tell somebody I need help. It's crazy to me, my brothers and sisters, that we will go through life thinking that we have more friends than we actually do. It is crazy that even though you may work with some people, go to church with some people, sing with some people, be in the same crowd with some people, you would recognize that you really do have very few real friends. I'm amazed, my brothers and sisters, because there are many people that say I have a lot of friends. There's a lot of people that associate themselves with large crowds of people because sometimes we call ourselves popular only to equate popularity to how many people just know our faces. They never know who I am for real. They don't understand what I do in life. They don't know my mother's name, nor how many siblings I have. They don't know where I'm from originally, but they are considered friends by just knowing what I look like. It is amazing because when you are a friend with somebody that's a friend with somebody else, that friend considers you their friend. Without ever giving a test of true friendship, they associate themselves with you because you know somebody that they know. It is amazing, my brothers and sisters, that you will go through life thinking that many people really have your best interests at heart. It is crazy. I cannot make this up. There are some, there's a lot of people that have over a thousand friends on Facebook but only talk to five. It is amazing that when you have a program, you have 1,432 likes but only 200 people show up. It is crazy to me that as soon as you start a business of all the friends you have on social media, only the ones that talk to you on a daily basis support your brand. It is amazing to me, my brothers and sisters, that we say we have many friends, but when our cards are down, we just have a few. And I'm so glad this morning that I introduced you to a man that had just four friends. Preach the text, preach if you feel like it. Sometimes you just got to be glad that I have the few that I have. I'm glad this morning I don't have a lot of people trying to be my friend, trying to hang out with me, trying to become who they think they should become because I am who God called me to be. But I'm glad for the very few that I have. And you should be glad that even though you are called to do ministry, even though you're called to be an entrepreneur, even though you're called to do something more in life, you got to thank God that I started with the same people that I used to be hungry with. There's a few people that I used to starve with and we used to share food. We used to go out together and say, if you ain't have it, I got you. If you can't make it, I come get you. There's a few people that have a few friends that have your best interests at heart. And because of who you are, people will try to connect with you because they understand God got his hand. 
impact on you. And I'm always trying to figure out when do we test people's real loyalty or when will we ever test them to really be our friends. I cannot tell you what you should do, but I can only encourage you to get to a moment in your life where you start to evaluate who's really here to see you grow up, who's really here to see you become who God called you to become because sometimes you got to find some people that understand God got his hand on you so there's some things we just can't do there's some places we just can't go and because I acknowledge the hand of God on your life I will never want you to step out of character and brothers and sisters, I'm in the text this morning and we are introduced to this man. Jesus has arrived from Capernaum. He is now home and as he comes back home, my brothers and sisters, the news spreads overseer that Jesus is now back home. Many people have heard what he did in Capernaum and now since he's home, they're trying to see if he has the same ability. And when he comes home, he's now settling in someone else's house and the word spreads that he is there. And when he gets there, there's so many people there that there are no more people to come in. Jesus is so popular in this moment in text that there was no room to ever see him. And that is crazy to me that during this crowd, Holy Spirit, that during the crowd there was four friends, four men that were carrying one friend. It is crazy that as they are walking to Jesus, there are so many people trying trying to get him, but we are carrying our friend. It's crazy. I've got to have you understand this call before I move forward. It is crazy. There are so many people, Trey, that is around Jesus, but I'm carrying somebody and they can care less of what I'm carrying. Can I make a man's paw for you? People can care less what you're going through as long as I get Jesus for myself. They can care less how much baggage you have, how much disease is in your body, how many things you are carrying, they could care less about you, but you got to find you four friends that will carry you when you cannot go yourself. Hallelujah. He had to come to the realization that during this moment he could not walk, so he had to trust those that were carrying him. Whoa, good God Almighty. Can you trust those people that you call friends to come to your bed when you're sick and you don't know what to do? Can you trust those people that you call friends to feed you when your body is not able to? Can you call those people that you call friends to come see you when your mother dies and not go ask you a thousand and one questions? How you feeling? How you doing? Did you eat today? But they just come because they understand I got to carry my friend. Lord have mercy. They had to carry him because he did not have the ability to walk to Jesus. And as they were going to Jesus, my brothers and sisters, they come to the realization, my friend, I have a problem. We have a problem. We got to wait and strategize of how we're going to get you to Jesus. And it's crazy because as they were trying to get him to Jesus, they never stopped to think. They just start moving. And that's what you need in your life. A few friends that are crazy enough to start moving when it's inconvenient. I know there's a crowd there, but I got to get you there. There's a few friends in your life that understands if you don't start moving, you ain't never going to move. And those are the people that you got to keep around. They always ask to you, when's the song coming out? When's the business going to start? When you going to start preaching again? When you going to start singing again? Those are the people you got to keep around you because they understand if you never move, you won't get there. And he said to his friends, well, 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 wait. We can just stay here for a little bit. They said, no, Jesus ain't coming out no time soon. We got to get you there. And what's crazy to me is one friend said there's no room to get in the front door and they won't move. There's no room to get in the back door. They won't move. But one friend said, you know what? Ain't nobody up there in the roof. I need some friends that have so much faith in what God is doing in my life to do something crazy, to sow a seed so big that they say, I know you're going to give it back and more. To do something so crazy, but to climb on the roof with a man in a bed is really crazy. It seems like I don't think nobody that's one of his friends 
saints have ever climbed the roof before. But to understand now, understand this. Nowhere in the text do we ever find out how they got up there. But remember, they got up there. And sometimes you got to thank God that you have some crazy friends. I mean those friends that understand that you by any means necessary have to get your loan, have to get your business, have to get what you I will be on the phone calling everybody to get what you need. Because I'm your real friend. Yes, sir. Real friendships come from difficult situations. Real friendships don't come when I have everything going good. Real friendships come when I hit bankruptcy. Real friendships come when I quit my job to care for my sick mother. Real friendships come when I don't know what to do and you got to carry me in the season where my anointing can that know God more than I know him to carry me in this season because I had no ability and the crazy thing is nowhere in the text overseer when you find out that the man that's on the mat knew God but the relationship between him and his friends got him saved watch this the Bible says because of their faith he was forgiven nowhere in the text did it ever say that he was Do you trust the God in me to get you to the place called glory? 
Do you trust me enough to allow me to put my hand on you and to pray for you? Do you trust me enough that when your mother's sick, that I come to the bed and I pray for her? Do you trust me enough to allow me to come when you don't know what to do and I speak a word over your life? Do you trust me enough to believe in the same God that I believe in? I'm preaching for myself today because I got to have you understand I have few friends because of the glory that I carry in my bosom. I have few friends because there are times where I cannot explain to you what is happening in my life. There are times over here where I cannot talk to you because God is doing something in me. And before I have a premature delivery because I'm trying to please you, I'd rather talk to God about it. And people get mad because I don't want to talk to them about what God is doing. People get mad. We don't want to tell them why you feel like this. Well, talk to me about it. Explain it to me. Maybe I can't explain what he's doing. But I'm glad to have a few friends that will carry me without knowing all the information. I'm glad to have a few friends that don't know what's going on. But all they say is, if you need me, call me. I'm glad to have a few friends that can care less how I feel about them talking to me. They still won't call me. There's a few people in your life you just got to trust. There's a few people you just got to trust. Can I trust you enough to carry me when I cannot walk myself? I'm only preaching the text today and he is in this understanding moment because as they're on the roof get ready to close here now as they're on the roof they are taking the bricks down and it's crazy because I don't think nobody in the friends group was ever an architect nor did they ever do construction so they're doing this all because of their friend needed God. They're only doing this because their friend needs the Savior. And it's crazy to me because it really would have been simple if somebody in the friends group just walked to Jesus and told him, I got a friend that needs you. But there were four friends that had the same goal that I will carry you to meet him as long as you get up by the time we leave. And when they were on the roof taking down the bricks, it is crazy because Somehow, some way, or shape, or form, they happened to be right over Jesus' head. And as the bricks were falling, I could only assume that the bricks fell and he had to look up for a moment. And as he was looking up, he saw somebody or something being lowered down to him. And it was at that moment that the friends didn't jump down with him. It's all about my friend right now. Last pause for somebody. Stop, stop being around people that always want to be in that congratulatory stage with you. Sometimes I'm really here. I know I'm a singer too but it ain't about me. It's about my friend. I know I'm a preacher too but it ain't about me. I'm here for my friend. I'm not here for you to say congratulations to me or to make me feel good. I'm only here because the elevation of my friend's life is coming. I'm not here because I'm good or because I'm great. I'm here because I believe in my friend. And they didn't jump down Trey. They didn't jump down with him and say hey Jesus, what about us? No. They stood up there and they said Lord it's all about him right here. He said okay, you know what? I know you don't know me, but for some reason I need some people like your friends that have so much faith in me that they bring you unto me. And I told you the topic was, please don't drop me. Because as he was going down, he had to trust them enough to lower him down to the place where he could have got comfortable enough to see Jesus. And as he got down there, he really kept praying, please don't drop me. It was a long walk to his deliverance. It was a long walk, my brothers and sisters, for him to get to where he needed to get to. I feel the glory of the Lord coming. And it was crazy because as he was walking, as they were walking, I know he kept saying, Lord, please don't let them drop me. Because if they drop me, the mission is going to be canceled. 
And if they drop me, the assignment's going to be failed. And the reason I'm glad, because if he had three friends, it would have been a struggle. If he had two friends, it would have been a battle. But since he had four friends, you get one side, I'll get the other corner. You get one corner, and you get one corner. But I'm glad today that his friends had a mindset. Don't you drop him. I don't care how heavy it gets. I don't care how long it takes us to get there. You better not drop him. And I know he was going, and they were walking together, step by step, trying their best to get there. And as they got there, one friend said, the front door is closed. The other friend said, if the front door is closed, then the back door is closed too. But I know they had to have a meeting with themselves. I'm saying, What's the only way to get him to Jesus? And they said, let's go to the roof. And when they got to the roof, let me preach for a little while. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. As they got to the roof, I was reminded that they started to take out bricks and to take down the bricks, trying to get him to Jesus. And as they were getting to Jesus, all they said was, I didn't drop him, and that's your word, I don't care where you are, but please don't drop me, if you can't carry me, don't try, if you can't carry me, don't come get me, if you can't hold on, when things get rough, don't be my friend, but I'm glad, oh, I'm glad, and they told him, we ain't gonna drop him, Please, oh, please, 
not tell us how long their friend how long their friend was paralyzed but his friends had a agreement that he's been paralyzed for too long And before one of us calls heaven our home, I want to see him walking and talking with us. You cannot have people in your life that when the tables turn, you've been carrying them. But when it's your turn to be the one on the mat, they say that you're too heavy. And no, you may not be physically on the mat, but there's a few people that is just praying, don't drop me. I know they might get on your nerves. I know it might be tired, you're tired of him saying, oh, it's me, but baby, listen to me. Please don't drop me. And the beauty of this text lies within the verse and the Bible says by their faith. Yes. Wow. Yes, God. Wow. By their faith some Oops. you are your sin are forgiven. It, it's strange in the text. Because of their faith, he was forgiven. Yes, sir. But he wasn't the one, how about so, that even asked for forgiveness. His friends had so much faith in God that their friend got saved. 
You need some friends that know God more than you know God. You, you cannot, you cannot be the only one that's a faithful member in your church. You, you, you cannot be the only one that knows the word. I got some friends that because of me they come to church. But it's up to them to get a relationship. I, I can take you to the river but I can't make you drunk. Lord don't let them drop me. At this time, I want to extend the invitation to whomever you that need him. It, it was crazy because when I was younger, the preacher used to say, those that are giving today, I, I pray that God blesses you. And, and, and he would say, you know, give the money back to him, Lord. You know, bless them. And he would say something that says something like this. Lord, even give them a good friend. I, I never knew how much you needed a friend until you had to go through it alone. Now don't get me wrong, you always gonna have Christ. But God gives you friends. He gives you friends. Jesus himself had friends. Peter, James and John was his friends, was his inner circle. If he ever needed them, read it for yourself. Every time Jesus did a miracle, Peter, James, and John were there because he knew for a fact they could handle the glory on my life. They never wanted to be Jesus. And people, some people can never be your real friends because they want to be you. And you got to find some people that are selfless sometimes. I told you, told you in the sermon, I'm not here to be grand. I'm a preacher, I'm a singer, and I got some great preacher friends, some great singing friends, and when I come to support them, I don't need you to call my name. I don't need you to let me come to the front. I come for them. I come to let them know I was in the building. So Lord, I pray that whoever needs you in these next few weeks, they reconnect with a good friend. But if they cannot find an earthly friend, let them understand what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What? Hallelujah. A privilege it is to carry everything. Everything to God in prayer. I pray that this word blesses you. Oh my God, because it blessed me. I pray that you reevaluate the true meaning of friendship. But God is allowing us to know. That if you don't have a good friend just yet, he knows that you have four somewhere. And those four, they won't drop you. Oh, I'm talking about They won't drop you. No matter how heavy you get. Oh, shut up. 
they won't drop you. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we glorify you. We thank you for the moments that we have spent with you. Now, Lord, bless us and keep us, this is my prayer. Father God, allow heaven to smile on us. Allow us to see the dawning of a brand new day. Father God, I pray now for those that are saying, God, I don't have these four friends that this man had. Lord, show me who to go to. Send up my way. God is going to show you. Now, Lord, we thank you for this moment. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to die with you tonight. Thank you, O oh God, for this morning's experience. Now, Lord, bless us and keep us. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the sweet holy communion, be with us both now and forever. The church of the living God says, Amen, Amen, Amen. See you real soon.